We left off the last video with casting the rear wheel spindle mounting brackets and the rear hub. You can see in this image the seat cushions are terrible. I made these quickly with the materials I had on hand just for testing. And they go all the way back to the original mock-up made out of wood. They're simply soft foam on a wood backing with a canvas wrap stapled to the wood. You sink right through them to the hardwood underneath. And they're not even hard mounted to the frame, just resting on it. So first I update the seat. I'm sticking with the plywood backing for now, but this time I have three layers of foam of various density, where higher density foams are stiffer and lower density foams are of course softer. So here is a quick mock-up of the seat backing with the dense foam layers. So here is the green soft thick foam, the black medium density foam, and the blue the densest foam. And they are just quickly hot glued to each other to remain in place. A black nylon covering is wrapped around them and stapled to the wood in the back. In the back of these pieces, I made some quick mounting brackets with small pieces of 1 inch angle iron. And of course I cut and welded corresponding brackets to the frame. So this is at the top of the headrest here. And now you see that headrest mounted to the frame. I added some mounting brackets for the bottom part of the seat and some brackets for the back of the seat. And the completed seat. It's looking much better. It's no stitched leather showstopper or anything, but I think it's fine for a proof of concept prototype. Well, this brings us to about 2009. At the start of that year, my girlfriend was killed in a car accident, which as you can imagine was completely devastating to me. I was then laid off around the middle of the year in July, along with a few hundred other people blacklisted from the company I'd spent the majority of my 15 year IT career with because the CEO was doing something shady. And since the start of the real estate market crash, my new house with that great three car garage shop had plummeted in value to about half what it was when I bought it. To take a break from it all, I tried to take a nice ride on my V-Storm to Chicago and ended up in that nearly fatal accident. So 2009 was a pretty terrible year. I moved back in with my brother and I did find a good deal on a shop to help keep the project alive. I couldn't really afford to heat it and it continually rained rust down from the 50 year old steel roof, but it was enough. I did get a new V-Strom after that accident, the 1000cc version, and I set it up again for long distance touring, and I've been very happy with this bike since then, it's the bike I still ride today. So I moved everything into the new shop, which was now my fifth shop. This one was about 10,000 square feet, and was the second floor of an old Department of Motor Vehicles building, but it had a ramp in the back and I could drive my car or ride my bike right up into it. So during this time, I spent a lot of effort on the conceptual foundation of the final design. After the prototype is completed and tested, this all new version will be built, integrating everything that I've learned from the prototype and made from all new high-end components, round tubing, fiberglass, cowlings, etc. As you've seen from the work so far in the virtual pivot point assembly, just as in the film, the front cowling will rise up. But here, once it rises up, it will lock in that position, allowing the operator to easily pull themselves up and out of the bike. With the flick of a switch, it will lower back down. Nearly every bolt and panel is laid out in this design, so it's pretty close to what the final version will look like, but there will no doubt be some changes. It's designed to meet the legal DOT requirements for a motorcycle in the United States with the license plate mount, reflectors, blinkers, brake lights, etc. This version is modeled around the Harley Twin Cam 88B as the power plant, transversely mounted behind the operator. Just in front of the heads is a NACA inspired air scoop to help provide cooling air to the engine. The pronounced slope of the front cowling sides and the cowling protrusions just below the engine heads will also help to produce a downforce at speed. Here's a nice straight on view which shows the early design low speed stand deployed. I added two small running lights to the lower part of the front wheel cowling 
Along with the headlights, this would create a distinct triangular lighting pattern. The yellow reflectors are required by US DOT regulations. One thing that is not accurate here is where the front cowling meets the front wheel covering. This is because I'm not exactly sure where the sideways center of pressure will end up. If the center of pressure on the cowling is above the steering axis, then a strong crosswind will cause the steering to turn and lean the bike into the wind, which is a good scenario. But if the center of pressure on the cowling is below the steering axis, the wheel will turn into the wind, but the counter steering effect of motorcycles will cause it to turn with the wind, a destabilizing effect that could be dangerous. So if the center of pressure of the cowling is below the steering axis, then it will not turn with the steering wheel. If it is above it, then I'll have it turn with the wheel. After experimenting with many different designs, I decided to route both exhausts to one side. The single-sided exhaust and air intake help to visually balance out the massive single-sided swing arm on the other side. Here's a glimpse of the inside of the rear. Note the pink cylinder in the rear wheel. That's the reverse motor, which fits great where that cylindrical protrusion in the design of the bike from the movie is. And here's a full view without the cowlings. The gas tank has been moved down under the seat for better weight distribution. The forks are again a conventional parallel tube fork design. It's still split though, allowing the front end to rise up around the virtual pivot point assembly. The front end is still a leading link, while the rear will be a single sided swing arm. The first thing I got to work on after setting up everything in the new shop was a simple pair of work stands for the bike. Up until this point, I was still resting the bike on a 2x4 wooden frame. So it was time to make some real metal work stands and to raise the bike to a better height for working on it. Made just from angle iron, these were designed so that you could place them under the bike, then stand on them and pull the bike up onto them, much like raising a bike onto a center stand. Each stand was then placed on a dolly and clamped to it so I could easily move the whole bike around. Now that the steering column was rigidly attached to the frame, but the handlebars rose up with the virtual pivot assembly, I needed a way to lock those two together when the handlebars lowered. So this is the steering column latch. The upper V-block with a large hole through it would be attached to the handlebars and could rise up. The lower block, pink here, would be mounted to the frame steering column. On the sides are clamps with curved tops. These would allow the V-block to close and then lock in place. First, I had this V-block made by a local machinist. The steel plate would be the mounting point for the lower half of the block. A pull-type solenoid, when energized, would retract rapidly with a decent enough force to open up the clamps. A spring is added so that the clamps will close automatically after the V-block is inserted. In order for the pull-type solenoid to have enough room, the clamps on either side needed to be extended. In order to mount the pull-type solenoid's end, two grooves needed to be milled into the end of one of those clamp extensions. Reassembling it here, the extension with the grooves milled into it will mount to the pull-type solenoid end here. And those extensions will be connected to the bottoms of each side of the clamps. These are of course rough cast pieces I made with my kiln casting myself, so they're a bit rough and their accuracy is low, but they should be sufficient for just testing the concept out here. And now the solenoid is reconnected for testing. And giving the whole assembly its first real test. 
Look at that. Looks like it's working pretty good. Unfortunately, when I tested the fit on the steering column on the bike, I ran into a little snag. The extensions added to the clamps on the sides made it a little bit too long and it interfered with the frame bars on the sides of the steering column. So I decided to reinforce those bars on the outside and then cut an arch on the inside to make room for the extensions on the steering column latches. I then tested the whole steering column lock latch assembly after the frame modification and it does look like it has plenty of clearance. Well that's it for part 5. I hope you're all, all still enjoying this series. I will be reducing the frequency of these to about every two weeks instead of weekly, but please stay tuned, we're almost caught up and ready to move on to the newest progress. Again, please like and share this video, and please subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified when future videos are released.